Because why would you feel good about that? Why don't I feel good about yeah. what Kanye is saying? Both of them and Kyrie. What they got going on? Well, I'll talk mainly about Kanye. I mean, right, what about Kanye? Why you don't I'm feel good about what you're saying? And he's praising You're half Jewish. Yes, and he's praising Hitler, saying the Nazis are cool and saying the Holocaust didn't happen. Yeah, no, we support Hitler. Right. 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 All of you? Yeah. Right. You know, because Hitler was killing your people, man. Hitler knew who the real Jews was. Ah! Right? Hitler wasn't oppressing my people. He was coming for your nuts. Holy right? And let me give let me give you a wake-up call, man. You're not a Jew. You're not Jew. Right? You're the you the seed of the devil, man. Right? Sometimes people look like they know a lot, but in reality they don't know. They just know a few things and they make enough of a stink about them that it makes it seem as if they know more than everybody else. Similar to those uh Rishayim, those Israelites. These idiots, goyim, that uh, they're not idiots because they're goyim, because there are many smart goyim, but they happen to be one of the, uh, the, the idiots among the nations instead of the righteous among the nations. Now these idiots have been making a bigger stink lately. I had a few people send me messages about them and uh, say, oh, this is concerning, anti-Semitism, Kanye West is talking about the Israelites. Now I know these morons from years ago, I remember when I lived in New York, you always had one of these Amaleks in the middle of the street wearing something that he bought from a costume store and he's yelling and screaming the New Testament, but he's you know pretending as if he's reading the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai and he's reading it in English because none of them know Hebrew and uh, you know, yelling at everybody that they're the righteous, they're the original Jews, they're the, uh, the ones and the Jews of today are fakers and, and, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, at that time that I saw them initially, I didn't know anything about Judaism. So there's not much to argue here. I just knew they're idiots because uh, just the way they behave. Today, Baruch Hashem, after Baruch Hashem, I've had enough time uh, to, to learn enough that they're morons. Why are they morons? Because their entire premise of everything in regards to being an Israelite and the original Hebrews and they're black and all this racism, all of that can be crushed in literally just a few sentences. There's no need for a debate. I would never have a debate with one of these people because, again, they're violent people both, both verbally and otherwise. And even more so, they're simply mental midgets because they don't even know what they don't know. First and foremost... Your religion of Christianity, and it is your religion because you're reading the New Testament. Anyone that reads and follows the New Testament is a Christian. There's no question about that. God did not give the New Testament to Am Israel at Mount Sinai. New Testament did not exist. Okay, so anyone that reads New Testament, you are a Christian. Rule number one. Number two, you are reading, let's say you say, no, no. I, let's say if I take a side and I don't read the Jesus part, the Matthew and the Luke and the Stephen and the Joes, whatever it is in there, all these idol worshipers, let's say I discount them, I'm reading from the Old Testament, like they pretend like they do. I'm reading from the Old Testament, the real word of God. Okay, buddy, let's see you read. Read it to me. Read me the first verse. In the beginning, oh, hold on a second. I said read it. In the, in the beginning, well, no, 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 read it. In the beginning, I'm reading in the beginning. It's not in the beginning. Where does it say in the beginning? Well, it says right there. No, no, you're reading the New Testament in English. It says, Bereshit bara elokim et ashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. It's in Hebrew. It's not in English. Your translation is a manipulation. Don't tell me that you that came... 1,500 years after Am Yisrael received the Torah, you're going to come to my house, to my religion, to my Torah, and tell me what it says when you don't even know the language for heaven's sake. So that's argument number two, the end. Now, of course, if you want to deal with the whole race card, this is what makes them stupid. The first two makes them ignorant. The third one is what makes them stupid. Why? They claim to be the original Jews because the original Jews, according to morons, were black. Now, all you need to do is read the Torah to know there could never be a possibility that the original Jews were black. Why? Where did the Jews start from? They're going to tell you all types of mumbo jumbles depending on who the yeller is. But the truth is, where did Amisad start from? 
Avraham, Avraham Avinu. So where do we learn about Avraham for the first time? Where? They're going to tell you, oh, we learn about him in Parashat Lechlecha. No, it's not Lechlecha, it's Lechlecha, and it's not that. We learn the first time about Avraham at the end of Parashat Noach. Noach ish tzadik tamim bedorotav. Noach. That's the parasha. At the end of parashat Noach, we learn about the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, actually one of the people that was part of the Tower of Babel, one of the wicked people, was Avraham's father, Terach. Okay? Now, this is where everything was. Ba- uh, Babel had a place in it called Ur-Kazdim. That's where Avraham was thrown into the fire by Nimrod. Where is Babel? That's Babylon. That's Iraq. Iraq, if you want to see it in English. It's, go find me one African-American black guy in Iraq. Find one. You're not going to find. Now, I love black people. I have plenty of black students and black friends. But don't tell me that the color of your skin means that you're righteous or you're wicked and even make it to seem that if I'm not the same color as you, therefore I'm not good. This is moronic. Even more so when your whole testament is literally something you can collapse in a matter of a few minutes because you don't even know your own history. You don't even know your own history. You're going to tell me they came from black people. Where did Avraham come from? He came from Iraq eating madbucha. Eating falafel, eating shawarma, not eating a, uh, 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 a, the, the food that you like. He's not eating hot wings. He's eating falafel. He's eating shawarma. This is where, this is, this is where Avram came from. And after that, Avram, where does it say this? It says it in the Tower of Babel, but even more it says it in the verses themselves. Where it says, English. When Terah, oh, this is, yeah. Uh, when Terah had lived seven years, he begat Avram, Nachor, and Aran. Now these are the chronicles of Terach. Terach begat Avram, Nachor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died in a lifetime of Terach, his father. In his native land, in ur Kasdim. Where is ur Kasdim? Go look on Wikipedia. It's in Iraq. Iraq. Saddam Hussein. Former leader. That's where Iraq is. Now if you want to know further... Where did, where did they go after? Vaykach terach et Avram bno vet lot ben Haran ben bno vet Sarai kalato esh et Avram bno veitzu itam miur kasdim lalechet arza knan vayavo ad Haran veishvu sham. Where's Haran? Terach took his son Avram and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson. And his daughter-in-law, Sarai. That ends up being Sarai later on. The wife of Avram, his son. They departed with them from ur Kasdim to go to the land of Canaan. They arrived in Haran. And they settled there. Where is Haran? Where is that? Ethiopia? Where is that? Jamaica? Where is that? Nigeria? Where is it? Turkey. Turkey, you know Turkey, Thanksgiving Turkey? There's a country called Turkey. Before there was Thanksgiving Turkey. That's where Haran is. Go find me a black person that lives in Turkey. That was born there. And is from the time of Avram Avinu. So, you see Rabotai, those idiots, and I emphasize, idiots, are people that are a danger to society. Why? Not because of their demeanor and their gigantic size and their weird clothes but rather because when they speak they speak in such a demeanor with such mm, oomph behind their voice and command of their beliefs that it actually sounds like what they're saying is true so people follow them 
into Gehenom. And guess what? They're also going to go to Gehenom. Who's not going to go to Gehenom? Someone that studies and doesn't make things up based on their preferences of their skin color and their shoe size and their hair preference and even what gel they put in their hair. You want to be righteous? Follow the way of God of Israel, not the God of the Israelites and the God of the Christians and the Messianics and all these Baba Meisters that are out there. Follow the God of Israel. Who's the God of Israel? Five books of Moses. Read it with commentary by Rashi. You'll understand a little bit more. After that, we can talk further because there's a whole lot more to the Torah than what you're seeing. But first thing you have to do, abandon those false beliefs and that wicked, wicked behavior that's abusing society and the public at large. And even more so, stop claiming to know more than the Jews who received the Torah at Mount Sinai and are observant to that Torah till this day. Stop pretending you know more than us when you don't even know our language and neither do you even know our God. You know something you created and you are acting simply like a fool that's going to end where foolish people are, like Ephron. So this, Rabotai, is something that is a cancer in society today because there are speakers that know how to speak. Sometimes they'll be in the middle of a street. Sometimes they'll be in a church with 250,000 people. Sometimes they'll be in a stage at a TED talk and they speak in a certain demeanor, certain amount of confidence, certain amount of information, certain amount of cockiness that is impressive upon the weak, the ignorant. And what ends up happening is that they take advantage of those little innocent sheep. Now, why are the innocent sheep allowed to be taken? Why does God allow it? Who told you to be a sheep? You could have been the shepherd if you learned Torah. Now, will you be able to learn the entire Torah? No. Why? Torah is wider than the ocean. But you could certainly learn a lot of Torah. And at the very least, not be a sheep.